Today is the 98 year anniversary of the Matewan Massacre, which was a shootout between the Baldwin Feltz Detective Agency, the people of Matewan, including the police chief Sid Hatfield, and striking miners. The event took place on May 19, 1920, and when the gunfire was over, 10 people were killed, including Mayor Cabell Testerman and the lead detectives sent to evict the miners from their homes. So what led to this bloody shootout, and what were the effects this had on the rest of the West Virginia mine wars? Before we can find out, let's dive into the history of the Baldwin Feltz Detective Agency, the striking miners, and Sid Hatfield. Sid Hatfield was born in Blackberry, Pike County, Kentucky, in May of either 1891 or 1893. He became a miner in his teens and then worked as a blacksmith for several years. He received his nickname Smiling Sid because of the gold caps on several of his upper teeth. He seemed to have a reputation for hard living and fighting, and his appointment in 1919 to the post of police chief of Matewan surprised some of the locals. He was a staunch supporter of the UMWA. The Battle of Matewan gave Hatfield a decree of celebrity. He appeared in a short film, Smile and Sid, for the Union Mine Workers of America, the UMWA, and was photographed with other UMWA activists, including Mother Jones. He was sent to stand trial with his friend and deputy Ed Chambers on conspiracy charges for another incident in Welch, West Virginia. Both men arrived in Welch on August 1, 1921. Unarmed and accompanied by their wives, several Baldwin Feltz men shot them on the Muckdow County Courthouse steps. Hit in the arm and three or four times in the chest, Hatfield died instantly. Chambers was shot several more times as his wife tried to defend him, and he was finished off with a bullet in the head by Charles Lively. None of the Baldwin Feltz detectives were ever convicted of Hatfield's assassination, and they claimed they had acted in self-defense. There was an outpouring of grief for the fallen local heroes at the funeral, which was attended by at least 3,000 people. The Baldwin Feltz Detective Agency was founded in the early 1890s by William Baldwin in Roanoke, Virginia, initially to contract as a private police force to protect railroads. From the beginning, Baldwin Feltz agents were deputized by hand-pressed locals, local sheriffs, to maintain law and order, but co-operators increasingly used them to prevent organization of the miners led by the United Mine Workers of America. The guards kept Union sympathizers from entering the coal camps. They spied on miners, reporting those with Union sympathies. Their highly organized spy system extended even into the UMWA membership. In 1902, they helped break a strike in the New River Field. That got them some notoriety. In 1900, Thomas Feltz joined the agency as someone who could provide legal advice to the firm. The agency became known for crime busting after it successfully cracked down, tracked down members of the Allen family wanted in a shootout in 1912 at the Carroll County Courthouse in Hillsville, Virginia. That left the judge, the sheriff, the prosecutor, a juror, and a witness dead or dying. Though two of the Allens fled the state, the Baldwin Feltz detectives, led by Thomas Feltz, managed to locate and arrest all the fugitives within six months. By 1913, railroad crimes and associated banditry had decreased, and Baldwin Feltz turned to other fields, in particular the provision of private security forces for mining companies. At the time, public law enforcement and the maintenance of order and labor management disputes was also left to the company owners. Baldwin Feltz Detective Agency supplied guards and detectives that were used by the mine industry to suppress strikes, to collect intelligence, and the movement of union operatives, to prevent labor organizers from entering company grounds, and even to evict workers in company-owned housing who had joined a union, gone on strike, or failed to pay rent. This work soon brought the agency into conflict with labor and labor unions. Baldwin Feltz is today best known for its violent confrontations with labor union members in places such as the Pocahontas Coalfield region of West Virginia and the Los Animas County in southern Colorado. Among union members, the agency was regarded as nothing more than union busters and hired thugs. A former Attorney General of West Virginia, Howard Lee, who knew both William Baldwin and Thomas Feltz, recalled that the men were the two most feared and hated men in the mountains. They were also involved in the Ludlow Massacre and the Paint Creek Cabin Creek Strike of 1912 in southern West Virginia. Baldwin died in 1936 at age 75. Thomas Feltz died a year later at the age of 69. 
1937, four months before his death, Thomas Feltz had formally dissolved the Baldwin Feltz Detective Agency. By 1912, Southern West Virginia miners were placing their hopes for the future in their union, the UMWA. There have been earlier attempts to organize the region's miners, most importantly during the national strikes of 1897 and 1902. They had only limited success, but the Union did gain an important foothold in eastern Kanawha County. In April 1912, miners along Paint Creek and Cabin Creek in Kanawha County walked off their jobs, and the Great Mine Wars began. Their basic demand, employer recognition of the Union, seemed simple enough. But they and the coal operators alike knew that this would mean the end of company housing, company stores, company schools, company guards, and company churches, as well as better pay for the miners and control over their own lives and work. The Paint Creek and Cabin Creek strike lasted a year and a half. Miners were beaten, ambushed, and killed by mine guards, machine gunned by an armored platted train called the Bull Moose Special, illegally court-martialed, and then deported from the state. The miners responded in bloody ambushes of their own, including the Battle of Mucklow, which left 16 men dead. On January 30, 1920, Frank Keeney, then president of UMWA District 17, launched a drive to unionize the rest of southern West Virginia. Gunfights, explosions, and other forms of conflict occurred in numerous coal towns. In these battles, miners fought the newly established state police as well as mine guards and strike breakers. During this period, miners worked long hours in unsafe and dismal working conditions while being paid very low wages. Adding to the harsh hardship was the use of coal scrip by the Stone Mountain Coal Company. Because the scrip could only be used for those goods the company sold through their company stores. A few months before the Battle of Maitwan, Union miners in other parts of the country went on strike, receiving a full 27% pay increase for their efforts. Lewis recognized that the area was ripe for change and planned to organize the coal fields of southern Appalachia. The Union sent its top organizers, including the famous Mother Jones. Roughly 3,000 men signed the Union's roster in the spring of 1920. They signed their Union cards at the community church, something that they knew could cost them their jobs and, in many cases, their homes. The coal companies controlled many aspects of the miners' lives. Stone Mountain Coal Corporation fought back with mass firings, harassments, and evictions. In May 1920, the Battle of the Tug erupted in Mingo County, three days of unabated violence on a 10-mile front along the Tug Fork. Determined to stop coal production, miners fought pitched battles with mine guards, deputy sheriffs, and police. Their voice was going to be heard, and they were going to get what they wanted. On the morning of the 19th day of May, 1920, Albert Feltz, who was connected with the Baldwin Feltz Detective Agency and who was also a deputy sheriff of Mingo County, West Virginia, with 12 other men went to Matewan to evict about half a dozen men who were unlawfully holding possession of some houses belonging to the Stone Mountain Coal Corporation. These miners had been repeatedly notified to surrender possession of the premises occupied by them, but had refused to do so. Under the direction of Albert Feltz, the household effects of these men were carefully and allegedly peacefully removed. Mr. Feltz and his men had rifles with them, but all of them were in grips or packages except possibly three. But we're not 100% sure we're going off a lot of eyewitness accounts. These rifles had been put together while the evictions were being made because of the fact that a large body of men headed by Sid Hatfield had marched out to the place where the evictions were being made and allegedly conducted itself in a very threatening manner. This crowd was joined by Mayor Cabell Testerman, who discussed the legality of the convictions with Mr. Feltz. Mr. Feltz told Mayor Testerman that the evictions were legal and advised him to get into communication with the county authorities at Williamson and also with his personal counsel. Matewan Chief of Police said Hatfield intervened on behalf of the evicted families, but after a while, they left. In the afternoon after the evictions had been made, Mr. Feltz and his men went to the Arias Hotel at Matewan, where they had supper and put all of their rifles in packages or grips, preparing to take train number 16 of the Norfolk and Western Railway Company, which left about 5 o'clock p.m. out of Matewan, heading to Bluefield, which is where the Bottle and Feltz Detective Agency had their headquarters. In the meantime, Sid Hatfield 
had called a man by the name of Tony Webb at Williamson, who was at that time a deputy sheriff of Mingo County, and who was a friend of the UMWA, and requested him to send up warrants for the arrest of Feltz and his men. Webb informed Hatfield that he could not get the warrants to Maitland before train number 16 run. After eating, the detectives then walked to the depot to catch the train back to Bluefield. They were intercepted by Hatfield, who claimed to have arrest warrants from the county sheriff. Detective Albert Feltz produced a warrant for Hatfield's arrest, which Mayor Cabell Testament claimed to be fake. The detectives didn't know they had been surrounded by armed miners who watched intently from windows and doorways along Main Street, and while Feltz, Hatfield, and Testament faced off, a shot rang out. They're not 100% sure who fired the first shot. Some people say Feltz did, Albert Feltz. Some say Sid Hatfield did. Some say a detective in the back did. Some say it was one of the miners in the windows. No one knows. Like I said, there are a few different versions of how events went down. There was another version that said Testament was killed by Sid Hatfield, which some people say is interesting because within two weeks of the massacre, Mayor Testament's widow became Sid Hatfield's bride. Now, according to Cabell Testament's widow, him and Hatfield had made a deal basically saying, Sid, if something happens to me, I want you to look after my family. So, one, once again, it's one of the things we don't know for sure, but the Baldwin Feltz agents, they used that as often as they could to say, no, Sid did shoot him. Sid did shoot him. While there's witnesses uh, that were in town that said Sid shot Testerman, uh, felt shot test men. No one really knows, and that's one of the interesting things about the Maywall massacre. Like I said, what we do know, after the first shot rang out, the shooting became general. Lee Feltz, the brother of Albert Feltz, Albert Feltz, and C.B. Cunningham, who were one of the men with the detectives that day, attempted to defend themselves, but they were both instantly shot and killed on the spot. The other men who were with Mr. Feltz ran and were pursued with the results that C.T. Higgins and a bunch of other people, mainly detectives, were killed at different spots in the town of Maitwan while trying to get away. Captain Ferguson was killed at different spots in the town of Maitwan while he was with Mr. Feltz that day. He was shot through the shoulder, but made his escape somehow by hiding. Five of the other men with Mr. Feltz also succeeded in making their escapes without being injured. When the smoke cleared, seven detectives, including brothers Albert and Lee Feltz, were killed, and two minors were killed, and Mayor Cabell Testerman died of his wound shortly after the massacre. It is said that after the shooting, Sid Hatfield repeatedly boasted that he had killed three of the Baldwin Feltz detective men, namely Albert Feltz, Lee Feltz, and C.B. Cunningham. Shortly after the massacre, West Virginia Governor John C. Cornwell ordered the state police to take control of Matewan. Sid Hatfield and his men cooperated and sacked their weapons inside the hardware store. The miners, encouraged by their success in getting the Baldwin Feltz detectives out of Matewan, improved their efforts to organize. On July 1st, the miners union went on another strike, and widespread violence erupted. Railroad cars were blown up, and strikers were beaten and left to die by the side of the road. Thomas Feltz, the last remaining Feltz brother, sent undercover operatives to collect evidence to convict Sid Hatfield and his men. When the charges against Hatfield and 22 others for the murder of Albert Feltz were dismissed, Baldwin Feltz detectives assassinated Hatfield and his deputy Ed Chambers on August 1, 1921 on the steps of the Muckdow County Courthouse in Welch, West Virginia. Of those defendants whose charges were not dismissed, all were acquitted including the Baldwin Fels detectives agents who assassinated Sid Hatfield and Ed Chambers. They were all acquitted under the guise that it was in self-defense. Less than a month later, miners from the state gathered in Charleston, the capital. They were even more determined to organize the southern coal fields and began the march to Logan County. Thousands of miners joined them along the way, culminating in what was to become known as the Battle of Blair Mountain. 